are now viewing an online presentation of the International Sunday School lesson brought to you by FatherHilly.com. Remember the words of Paul, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman, that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The purpose of this video series is to help you divide the word of truth, both in deed and in word. Now come join us in this week's lesson. This is Reverend George Latimer Knight, and I want to thank you for joining us for this week's lesson. Our lesson date is June the 3rd, 2007, and the international subject is Committed to Justice. Committed to Justice. And this week's lesson is coming from the book of Amos. And the prophetic ministry of Amos was centralized around the idea that Israel had broken their covenant with God, the nation of Israel, and that God was going to, in fact, punish them for their violations. Now, the book of Amos is not preached very often or referred to very often in the church of today. And there is a good reason for that. The reason is that we live in such an open society. Our society is so open and so free to the point where it destroys itself. Uh, again, our subject is committed to justice. And we find that justice is the administration of what is just. And to be just is having a basis in or conforming to fact or reason. Fact or reason. A lot of people like to deal with opinions. And we all have our own opinions and our own views. And there's nothing wrong with that. There are facts in the world, real facts in the world. One plus one equals two. It doesn't matter what you believe about it. You can believe one plus one equals 20, but there's a real fact that one plus one equals two. One of the most profound things Father Hurley said, yet is so simple, is there is a right way and there is a wrong way. Amen. There is a right and there is a wrong. The reason why Amos is not preached is because to preach from Amos is to make it clear there is a right and there is a wrong. But most people don't want to be wrong. They just always want to be right. That is not the case. And we're going to see why that's not the case in today's lesson. So I ask you to uh, get your Bible out. Amen. And to turn to the book of Amos, the fifth chapter. And we're going to be dealing with verses 10 through 24. Verses 10 through 24. And let me read you our outline for today. We have outline number one, beware of social sins, verses 10 through 15. Beware the day of the Lord, verses 16 through 20. And beware of spiritual sins, verses 21 through 24. Now let us go into the word. Again, our first outline is beware of spiritual sins, Amos the fifth chapter, the 10th through the 15th verses. And verse number 10 says, They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. Now, in the gate is referring to the legal system. In this day, all legal proceedings were done right outside of the city gate. So here, the verse, what Amos is saying is, the people do not believe in legal justice. Not just moral justice, but legal justice. The court system is corrupt. The judges are corrupt. The attorneys are corrupt. Everything is corrupted. And there can be no justice, not even in the civil matters. And we find this even today. We have unjust laws. We have judges who are not able to administrate the laws properly, even the ones that are right. Uh, verse number 11. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat. Ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye sh shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye should not drink wine of them. Now the key to this verse is in the very first part. Therefore, as your treading is upon the poor. So he's saying that, yes, you have a lot of things, a lot of material wealth. 
but it's because you are downrating and treading upon the poor. You are taking advantage of the poor. Well, again, we find this today. This is why Amos is not preached today. We have people who have a lot of wealth. Celebrities, uh, politicians, corporate executives. Well, some of them, I don't want to judge and say most of them, but there are a good number of them who have wealth because they are taking advantage of the poor. They're underpaying their workers, the ones who actually work in their company and make the products or serve the customers. They're underpaying them, barely give them minimum wage. Some people pay under the table and don't even pay minimum wage. Yet they are millionaires and millionaires and billionaires. But they're not paying their people what they should, not taking care of their people. The government, the people in the government, they some make exorbitant amounts of money and take advantage of a corrupt system. Yet we don't have health care for the majority. Mothers who are pregnant, even some of them can't even get health insurance in some states. So the whole system has become corrupted. But Amos is saying, For ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye should not dwell in them. So you have these fine homes, but you're not going to dwell in them. You're not going to benefit from the wrongs you have done. Uh, verse number 12. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just. They take a bribe and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their rights. So again, he's going back to legal proceedings. He's taking advantage of people. It's what he's letting the people know. But he's speaking from the, on behalf of God. I know your manifold transgressions. I know what you're doing. I see what you're doing. And you're going to pay for what you've done. Verse 13. Therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Now, that sounds kind of strange. The prudent shall keep silence in that time. So I looked up prudent, and in the Greek, prudent comes from the Greek word sarcal, and it means circumspect and intelligent. And circumspect comes, basically, we guess where we get the word circumstances. So a circumspect person is a reflective person, one who looks at the pros and cons of anything, and also is circumspect and intelligent. So a prudent person is smart. They know. So a prudent person, they can look at the world, and they can see things for what they are. They have a keen ability to see the facts in the world. So what Amos is saying is that the prudent, the intelligent, the godly, they know things are going wrong. They see the corruption in society, but they keep silent. Martin Luther King said, the evil prospers because the good stay silent. The good people stay silent so the evil can prosper. Some say, where is God in today's world? God dwells in you. He lives in your body. So if you see the wrong and you do nothing about it, God is silent because you are silent. God needs a body to work through. Will you be that body? Verse 14 and 15. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you as ye have spoken. Hate the evil. This is verse 15. Hate the evil and love the good and establish judgment in the gate, that it may be that the Lord God of hosts will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. All right. So, most people hate the evil. They can look at a rapist and say, he's evil. Or they can look at the, the mother who neglects her child. She's evil. But most people can hate the evil. The very evil. The very the, the guts and the underpinnings of society. They can look at that and call that evil. But do you love the good? Do you love helping other people? Do you love... The idea of loving your neighbor as yourself. Do you love giving of yourself? With no thought of reward, do you love the good? So these are two separate issues. Most people try to put them together, but they are two separate issues. Hating the evil. Abhorring the evil. Speaking against the evil. But what about loving the good and doing good? Think about that as you go through your day.